We need to make sure that we're working on ourselves so that we can be authentic and know that we're worthy just as we are. Hey, I'm Lara, an artist, educator and entrepreneur who's danced through life in Australia, London and California. Now I'm an Aussie in Atlanta, Georgia, USA, juggling roles as an artist, ex-dancer, current actor, author, professional educator and qualified life coach. I'm also a wife and mother of two. Join me on this podcast crafted for creative souls at every level, entrepreneurs, artists, dreamers and hope-filled humans alike. I'm here to guide you towards a life of love, purpose, adventure, and boundless creativity. As a healthy, wealthy, and wise creative soul, I invite you to hit subscribe for weekly inspiration. Anticipate solo episodes, exclusive interviews with creative luminaries, and insightful discussions with my hottie hubby, Andrew, a specialist performance physical therapist, as we delve into the dynamics of relationships and more. Dive into a 360-degree view of making a creative life you'll love. Welcome to another episode of Healthy, Wealthy, Wise Artist Podcast. I'm Laura, and we're all about creating a 360-degree life that you love. We're diving into the world of relationships, specifically how to build exceptional ones, inspired by teachings of renowned relationship coaches. We'll discuss how to create meaningful and lasting connections, whether you're single, dating or in a committed relationship, this episode is for you. So what does it take to build an exceptional relationship? Many coaches will say it's not about finding the perfect partner, although I do think that's <laughs> that's a factor, but it's about becoming the best version of yourself and creating solid and genuine connections. So let's break down some key principles and joining me is my husband, Andrew, who we've been married for 18 years nearly (laughs) and together for 20. So we bring that wealth of experience to the episode as well. First up, self-worth and confidence are crucial. How does being the best version of yourself impact your relationships? Well, let's discuss how focusing on our own personal growth can affect, attract and keep the right partner and set the foundation for a healthy relationship. So with my husband, what are some personal development practices that have helped us feel more confident in our relationship? Well, I, when I was dating Lara, um, I had a mentor and some people in my life who I constantly asked and looked to for advice. So I think that was um, a key thing that can keep you in track and keep you growing. Yeah, and confidence is really important as well because it influences the approach that you have to dating and in your current relationship in marriage as well. Like an unconfident person is probably going to not be as authentic as they need to be. So, Mm. uh, you know, personal growth leads to more confidence as we unfold the layers of ourself and become our true selves. I'm working with a lot of clients and that personal growth in life coaching with them really does give them the ability to be more resilient, more Mm. confident, and just Mm. have their head in the right sort of game on forward motion, which is so, so, so good. I Uh, definitely found it was hard um, because I'm a shy internal processor. Mm -hmm. Um, So I needed some navigation. So some of these good friends were just saying, Andrew, you really need to get stronger, get some uh, t- some words around what you're saying, what you're trying to say. You need to get more developed in the sense of knowing what you're feeling so you can express it to your to, to Lara. And so I got quickly onto that process and just some navigation. I wasn't perfect, but mm. I was better and I had something to work on. But part of it was actually just diving in and being vulnerable. That's so true because if you don't know what you're feeling... <laughs> How the heck are you supposed to communicate that and then Mm -hmm. have a relationship where you can kind of go, hey, I need this when you don't even know what you need. So (laughs) that's already going to set you up for not a great 
relationship, whether mm-hmm. it's in dating mm-hmm. or other. And we have some fun stories coming up around that. Um, I was actually uh, working with a client and I want to share with you, but I'm going to just pin it for a minute because there's, we're going to talk about dating a bit, but talk about her personal growth around dating, which was mm-hmm. super cool. cool. All right. So let's talk about the dynamics of attraction. Um, how do we balance being our true selves with the desire to attract someone and why is it so important not to settle for less than we deserve and that can sound you know sound really entitled it's like I could self-righteously say I deserve the best but I'm not you know step one being my best I'm not you know working on myself and owning my own C-R-A-P so I see it's like you're saying if you work on yourself you'll attract different people or you'll attract, yes. have a different attraction thing. Yeah. And I remember uh-huh. years ago, you know, when I was trying to attract a mate, mm-hmm. it's such a funny word. A mate. <laughs> yeah. I was in a room full of heaps of people and my psychologist that I was seeing at the time said, Lara, until you heal yourself, you're going to keep attracting that same personality mm. type. And I mm. thought, how the heck does that happen? So look, an example of that is if you've got a huge father wound, you're probably going to, for females, quite often attract a man that's somewhat trying to meet that space in your life rather than actually being in that whole place and attracting somebody that isn't feeling that void for you. So mm. it's dangerous to not do personal growth. And we, we really do, when it comes to attraction, want to be our authentic self. But so often when people are dating, they kind of flip into that space of I'm going to act like this and say I like this in order to Mm. be with that person, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) in order to impress that person. But that's not good, is it? Yeah. I've known friends who seem to put on a different face. Mm -hmm. They're like a different mask when they're with that person or and we're like, who is this other person you you are? And yeah. without us and us being friends, they couldn't kind of see that. And they couldn't see they do that. They didn't know they did that. Mm. So it was this interesting thing of like, wow, they're just putting a mask on because they're wanting the attraction. They're yeah, wanting the relationship there. So it was interesting. It and goes it was, back to personal growth. Yeah. Like, you know, the yeah. first thing, we need to make mm-hmm. sure that we're working on ourselves so that we can be authentic and know that we're worthy just as we are. That's mm. really, really hard to get to, I know, but it's an ongoing journey and it's a lifelong journey. So you don't want to settle for less than you deserve as long as you are deserving by being that person who's working on your own self and you are owning your own stuff and you're um, walking in some level of humility um, and authenticity about who you are as well. Mm. Yeah, I think doing the work is is really important. Yeah. yeah. Well, we want to share some experiences with authenticity in dating and marriage is, is also a part of this conversation. But why do you think maintaining high standards, um, Andrew, is so crucial in relationships? Well, it's, it makes me think of um, uh, some friends who've, who've settled in a relationship and we can see that they're just not coming alive. Mm. That it doesn't match up with the sort of person we see that they are mm. or they don't ten, tend to talk about and, and go um, bring out of each other their passions, their joys. They're just yeah. kind of surviving or something. Mm. And and that's sad. And so, so there's this sense of like, when can you be honest? And mm. are you worth being honest to have that conversation or yeah. deal with that thing? Because you're probably too fearful to or something. Mm. And so it might be the same relationship can actually grow and get better. Or it might be a different partner. You know? mm. Yeah, <laughs> and if you think that you're not worthy of someone to begin with, you are more likely to settle for the first Mm. thing that comes along, get married and Mm -hmm. all of the above and, Mm. you know, not really go, hey, this is what I really want and I I am worthy of that. So maybe the word deserve is better flipped as um, who I feel I'm worthy of. Mm -hmm. And that's Mm. somebody with integrity. That's somebody who's honest. That's somebody who is kind and Mm. loving. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. it's not Mm -hmm. somebody who is going to treat you like dirt um, and knowing your worth is important so you don't attract Mm. somebody that's going to be dysfunctional and ruin your life essentially. (laughs) You've probably heard the expression marriage um, can be heaven or hell on earth. And I think a lot of people who have walked through that journey and over a 50% 50% now uh, ended in divorce, I'm sure they would agree that during those years of 
um, battling it out in in the house, that it was a horrible thing that affected their entire Mm. life. Um, Mm. Communication is also the cornerstone of any strong relationship. You've heard it before, but the problem is (laughs) most people have no idea how to actually break that down into real Mm. action steps for everyday Mm. life. So Mm. how can we improve our communication skills to enhance our relationships? Let's explore strategies for expressing our needs and resolving conflict. Big two, expressing your need, resolving conflict. So... Mm. What are some challenges, Andrew, that you faced with communication in relationships with me? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> um, I mean, I've had a, a journey through my life of, of having some unworthiness, um, self-belief, some lies in my head about all of that. So it's been a process to uncover them, to deal with them, do some work on that, why that's there. Um, but look, the balance is that I'm... In, in my true nature, a shy uh, internal processor, slower to think type person, and you're a wild white horse. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of, um, kind of do things and deal with the consequence later. You know, a Absolutely. little bit. Like you very yeah, wise. Fully own the, that. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the balance. <laughs> yeah. And so you kind of, you know, at um, step nine before you're at step two. Um, whereas yeah. I'm kind of like, oh, and there's step, steps in between here. So, so to get a, net, a word in edgewise, um, and um, so, and I would often just feel that it's hard to put it into words uh, to kind of um, share where I'm at or whatever else. So I could just yeah, you <laughs> articulate what you think's going on. Mm. That's what I was trying to say, um, and then I'd be like. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's right because I haven't got the words together where I need to go, no, I'm worth the best. I need to step away. Mm. I need 30 minutes or I need a day and I'm going to revisit this and I'm worth that. We're worth that. Mm. And that was better, but it was just like my sort of self-exploration to get to that place. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Actually, again, it comes back to that thing of your not knowing what you are feeling and mm. not being able to grow in your personal development and personal growth, which, by the way, doesn't just happen. It's something you have to keep working at lifelong, taking steps towards it. Most people don't set goals. Most people don't do reflective work, you know, and what am I feeling? Most people don't replace their thought and um, their negative thoughts and their destructive thoughts. They just get run by this mind of ours and it's just this wild, untamed beast quite often um and when when i say personal growth it's a learning about how to do all of those things how to flip our thoughts from negatives to positives um how to know what we're feeling and articulate it all of that growth is going to serve your relationship in an amazing way actually on that point the creative purpose journal that i have on my website is all about flipping thoughts yeah, that's super useful so yeah go on there grab a copy it's on amazon If you want to start to actually do some personal growth, it's like a life coach for creative minds. Mm. And again, I always say this, but if you're a creative and you've got a really bad relationship or you're really wanting a relationship, it's going to affect your creativity because every piece of our life affects another piece in the wheel of life. So that's why this podcast isn't just, oh, how to book this or how to book that. That's Mm -hmm. in here too. But it's really how to thrive as a creative in a holistic way. But we're talking about communication in relationships and skills around that. And one of the big things is in resolving conflicts is actually, like we said, knowing what you're feeling and being able to express. And then there's this thing called empathy, which is very, very difficult for a lot of people because empathy doesn't start with at least you've whatever, insert blank, um, in a mm. relationship and mm. you say you're upset. Well, at least you got a coffee this morning. I didn't even get one. That's not empathy. It's like that inflames the arguments. Mm. So, um, And the other thing is when, when your partner, the person you like, is upset or angry with you, it's being able to hear them and listen to them mm. without butting in, without saying to them, um Uh, at least my point of view you've got to hear my point of view you've got to be able to hear each other's and that can be hard when you're feeling really heated up so with with andrew and i sometimes that will happen like if if there's tension it'll happen later by a text where andrew has the ability to take more time to express his feelings and thoughts um because he's not always wanting to do that in the moment because he takes Mm -hmm. more time than me but also it's just that that secret eye language 
So, so, so not just kind of coming in with like, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening for me, and that's right. But say, okay, I see that you're upset right now, mm. uh, and that sucks. And yeah. just letting and sitting with that. I yeah. personally found that very uncomfortable, but I'm getting better at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it's helping my parenting too, just to be like, okay, this is happening. Mm-hmm. And um, rather than uh, my default is to solve it, right? Any guy listening to this, we want to solve it. We want to get the fix. And then we're like, yeah, look, I fixed that. I'm so awesome. So um, stopping that to just being with that person's emotions, being with that person's problem, the problem that we're facing together and sitting with it and going, this is uncomfortable. This is sucks. Okay. And I hear you. And that's so powerful. It just mm. kind of changes the whole atmosphere from being a place of like, well, I did this, well, you did this, well, you did this, you know, which yeah. it can get to quickly mm. to change our language of like, oh, I see you're doing this. I see this is happening for you. Okay. Um, and that's, that's hard and just be with that. And then usually there's going to be a place where like, I need to share my heart right now and mm. you can share and they'll do the same. And it's just to be seen and heard is powerful, really yeah. powerful. Seen, known. Heard very very powerful, mm. without saying anything at all, and, the, and sometimes the less you say, but truly looking at each other with eye contact, the better. And um, getting out of that thing where, when that person that you love or want to love is um, talking, that you're trying to think of your next cool thing to say, mm-hmm. but to actually try and silence that self talk and to That's actually good. really really listen, um, listen to understand. Mm. And on this. You've got to remember that points of view for every person on this planet are filtered through their experiences, their upbringing. So the way that people see the world varies. Mm -hmm. And to sympathize with somebody um, is one thing, but empathy is a little bit different. Um, A good picture of that is like empathy is like um, somebody's fallen down into a deep hole, if you can picture this with me, and the person up top says, oh, my goodness, you're down there. Let me come down. I'll throw in a rope and I'll sit with you. And they might not be able to help you get out, but they could maybe say, hey, like, let us let me see if I can sit with you for a minute in this place. Mm. And like um, getting in the well. Yeah, getting in the well. and just sitting with that person and saying, hey, like, I, I don't – or just sitting, you know, it might be better to think of it as just sitting above because they haven't fallen – you haven't fallen in with them, but you're just saying, hey, I'm just going to sit here because I can see you're having a hard time and I just want to sit with you and I can't climb in because there's no ladder. So um, – and the other thing is sympathy is kind of like, oh, I'm so sorry that you're down there. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Well, um, I- I've got things to do. So, you know, it's like it's not like that the ability to sit with somebody and, and mm-hmm. to really um, allow that person to feel what they're feeling and not try and fix it or solve it or at least it. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's important in relationships. And yeah. But both are good. Yeah. Like if you were standing on... Mm. At, the, at the high place and I was down in the in the well and you were like oh I don't have time but that sucks yeah and just to hear that's like oh she sees the predicament and like yeah like, well, at least there's that yeah <laughs> yeah well, they're similar but different <laughs> exactly yeah exactly all right another thing is that you need to create connection now at the beginning of course you know this because you're dating or you're meeting people and you're kind of like creating connection points where you sit down and you have a conversation that's connection you're looking at each other across the table but building a deep emotional connection Mm. is more important than a superficial attraction because that's what is going to sustain you long term so how do we create and nurture these connections in our busy lives especially once your relationship has started and life gets busy and as we often know the honeymoon period's over and you're doing life and you're journeying along you need to keep creating connection and we need to prioritize time to actually connect not just do parallel lives so mm. what activities or habits have helped you build a deeper emotional connection with me Andrew well for me it is Putting in the diary. Yeah. My default is not to use the diary. <laughs> it's really just to kind of put out fires. By the way, if you're American, that's calendar. <laughs> calendar. It's all right. Calendar. Oops. That was um, my t- cup of tea. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so it's not to calendarize and not to make plans regularly. It's just to put out fires, fix stuff, feel good about it, move on. Mm. <laughs> so um, to, to really put that in the calendar, stick to it. Yeah. Um, you know, go to Lara saying, 
oh, yeah, I've got this idea, let's do this. And it's that initiative taken. And that speaks volumes to Lara. Yeah. For Lara, she will, I can see she puts in the calendar and she shares it with me. So it's just done. And I'm like, you're right, she does that. So I think it's the intentionality for mm. us putting in the calendar. For others, it might not be the calendar, but you might just be like, okay, this night, we've just always do this night. And that's perfect. Mm. So, yeah. 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 And um, I tend to be a bit more of an initi- initiator there, but I've said it before. Mm-hmm. It's better when you start to get a pickleball with each other and that one person doesn't kind of coast on the other yeah. person's personality yeah. because it's meaningful for both to be initiating. And I was talking to someone who's been married for years the other week and she was expressing that now she goes out um, – on dates with her husband and she's bored she's like we don't have anything to talk about Hmm. and um it's like that that initial kind of getting to know somebody it just becomes well we're talking about the kids and work and the immediate but that actual sort of art of conversation Hmm. wasn't there for her so I suggested these conversation cards that I had used at um, my friend's house one time. And these conversation starters are so good because they're just like little prompts that you can use to continue to spice up and have conversational help if you're not quite sure how to, you know, actually go deeper. And for those that have kids, it's just, oh, we're talking about the kids suddenly. It's like actually learning, well, how can we actually make this time meaningful and And um, it might not sound romantic to those of you at the beginning who are connecting so easily, but as you go along, you want to be intentional about this connection and Mm. continue Mm. to delve deep and have exciting conversations. So if you need a little help, by the way, in the show notes, I've got the link to that product. Um, There's three. There's a dating one, there's a couples one, and there is a long-term couples conversation starter kit. They're so fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I took initiative once when we were super busy. I think we just moved over to this side of the of the country, um, and so we were just on adrenaline, <laughs> and it was like oh, just getting time together, booking someone for a you know to, to watch the kids while we have a date. It's really hard, um, so I think I just gouged out the evening, and I just said, okay, I just want to ask you about these things, and I came up with some things spur of the moment, um, and then. Um, you know, offered like a foot rub and tell me about this and just things I don't often talk about. And it was a, like different. Lara just was like, well, oh, this, like, we, we never do that, but it was great. And it just was like, okay, well, I'm up for this. You know, I showed her that I'm like, I'm up for, you know, just something different. Yeah, different is great. Changing it up, mixing it up, that's really, really great for anybody. Um, if you get lazy, and trust me, there is a lot of people who start well put mm. in some effort, but then they get so lazy. It's yeah. and, and what I mean by that is I've got another friend just going through divorce now who's expressed that her husband basically would just come home, turn TV on, eat chips, <laughs> switch off, drink beer, and that was sort of the extent of their relationship mm. um, for the last sort of three years. Mm. Um, and that kind of thing is nice when you first get home, but repeatedly every single day no longer, you know, initiating connection is going to create problems Mm. for you. All right. So let's go into dating a little bit because the modern dating landscape can be tricky. It's changed a lot. (laughs) Um, Some practical strategies around that that really resonate with me is I was actually coaching somebody the other day Mm. who was actively looking for um, a mate, a female I was coaching (laughs) who was looking for a guy (laughs) and (laughs) Um, she was doing that online through dating apps, and I think that's become more and more the norm. Um, and it was there were some areas that were really, really hard because, you know, she would, one, didn't have a car, young and still saving up for one, and had to travel a long way to meet somebody and then pay for a meal, and that's expensive. And then if you didn't like it, it's kind of awkward because you spent two or three hours making this big effort. So around modern dating, it's still important to kind of go, hey, what's important to me? What do I really value? And um, she was able through the coaching session to come up with some cool things like I'm going to meet them from now on at the cafe down the road because I can walk there. I'm going to tell them I've only got from two till three. That way I've got a you know, short hour they already know in advance and I can get away quicker because that boundary is in place. And mm-hmm. then she came up with four really cool questions that were important to her about her values 
um, and she had reflected on that and had those questions ready so it wasn't kind of awkward if that person wasn't much of a conversationalist. So as you go into those things, be intentional and actually know yourself and say, hey, what can I do that is going to serve this time and serve what I really want so that I'm not wasting their time or mine for that matter. (laughs) Um, But once you get into the relationship, of course, you've got to maintain it. What I would say on dating um, is that, you know, these apps are the modern way of meeting people, but I just wouldn't be so closed with today's busy lives Mm -hmm. and our Western society, how busy we are, to just those kind of lingering that little bit longer. Not forever, because that could get weird, you know what I mean? (laughs) But just lingering another 10 minutes and just being open to someone in the corner or being open to that person you're talking to and they might introduce you to someone else if you didn't stay you don't meet them so it's just like in our day and age where it's dating apps are the main way we meet someone just lingering at a store like being being a little longer with places not just like you know uh, like it's a transaction in and out you know places meet you'd be amazed what connections you can find Yeah. And now let's talk about independence and interdependence, because you probably heard the term codependency. So how do we support each other in a relationship while still maintaining our individuality? Um, You hear words in psych that come up like that person's got very enmeshed with that person. And I've, of course, met um, friends of mine, again, going through divorce at the moment, which has sadly become way too common who feel like I don't know myself at all anymore. I completely lost myself in that relationship and I compromised everything that I am. And, I mean, that kind of thing is is part and parcel why relationships do break up. So you need to maintain a sense of who am I in this relationship Mm. um, and continue to, you know, women eventually you hear about empty, empty nest syndrome um, and it's where, you know, your hu- you get older with your husband and your children grow up and they go off to college and they, they leave the house and suddenly you're like identity crisis. I don't know who I am. And I partly understand that, but also the warning there and the learning point is to not immerse yourself so much in the lives of others that you don't have your own sense of, you know, who am I without this um, and mm-hmm. what do I like without this because that's still a part of it and it's important and I think we need to, that is part of our identity, but there's got to be more because mm-hmm. our life is 360. <laughs> we have mm-hmm. different things. We've got to have our own friendships and we've got to have our own uh, efforts and things. Mm-hmm. So what are some ways that you maintain independence in our relationship, Andrew, and how do you support my interests and how do I support yours? Um, I think we're pretty intentional and this is your initiative, but I'll own that, (laughs) but I go with it and I think it's great, um, is that we do vision boards. Yeah. Uh, And so so we do spend some time at the start of the year or sometimes more regularly, um, but just to identify what's important to me with what's going on right now in my life and what I want to go for Um, and what's important to me with dates or family time or sport or whatever else. And so if that can go through the whole year, family. Uh, So it's really important that you've asked that, uh, you find interest in that. Or if I mention playing pickleball, that you're kind of like, do you like that? And I like when you ask me that because I'm like, oh, I get to actually share. Um, And so, so just taking interest in the little things, the little things we do, and just noting, ah, he likes pickleball. So maybe I'll get him a little pickleball set or I'll like make time and let's go and try it together or something. And it just, you know, would interestingly just blossom your relationship. Yeah, that's so true. And I, again, think, you know, that's a really good point because vision boards are something that I do do um, at the start of every year and I get my whole family to do their own and I sit with them and help them through it. And by the way, that's something I do as a life coach. If you need help with that, feel free to book a session, particularly you don't have to wait for the new year, but if that's your jam, then of course, wait for the new year. But it's really about setting goals and setting and having that visual picture of what do I like and in all of the different areas and facets of the wheel of our life. Um, So when I say that, I'm referring to, well, we've got you know, exercise, we've got personal growth, we've got our finances, we've got our environment that we live in, we've got our relationships, we've got our family and on and on. 
So it's looking at each area and going, well, what are my goals mm. for those areas? Most people wouldn't have even thought about it. So in, I get the family to find pictures that, first of all, we write down those those goals and then we find pictures to go with them. And that goes up on the wall and it's just a visual prompt every single day because it has to be stuck somewhere where you sit every day <laughs> um, that has this psychological effect of, hey, am I doing anything about that? Um, and it kind of keeps you accountable to your sense of who you are in the big picture. Um, and if you are out of balance, as in you're, you know, tending to lean too much into one thing, like some people work too much or some people um, put themselves last because, again, personal growth. They don't think they're worthy, so it all becomes about serving the family. That kind of stuff is where you end up in a crisis down the road. Mm, yeah, I mean, we've got a great culture of talking about these things and um, really digging this out of each other. But say you know, some friends in a relationship, they're a bit younger in their relationship, and um, if, say, you know, the... The, the girl in the relationship was saying, um, I don't know how to pull this out without being like a preacher to him or without seeing awkward. Um, and it just, I think we all came up with the idea of just like um, encourage that thing you see in him. So if it's outside of work and he's really good at talking to this young kid um, or being like a mentor figure, it's like just encourage that and just say, I really loved how you did that. That You seem to really be good at that. And then that encouragement can just blossom like, oh, yeah, I really do like that. And, and you can just open a conversation without saying, what do you like doing? You know, why are you <laughs> and being like more, you know, um, clinical about it? Mm, yeah. All right. And so the next area to really build, like I said, that exceptional relationship at the start, last area is the mindset and attitude. And if we talk about that, it's about cultivating a mindset of abundance and possibility in our relationships. And I want to break that down because that might sound like a little woo-woo. <laughs> um, but I want to share some experiences um, with maintaining a positive mindset in my relationship with Andrew and how we build resilience to bounce back from setbacks in our love life um, or in our life in general, which affects then our love life. So a positive mindset and a mindset of abundance and possibility is not kind of just getting rigid and having this you would hear about a fixed and a growth mindset. A fixed mindset would be like, well, that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And this is just how Andrew's always going to be. <laughs> and that Ooh. is just the way it is. <laughs> Where an abundance is, there's always possibility for growth mm. and change when you have a growth mindset. There's mm -hmm. always um, the ability. There's always hope. There's always mm -hmm. resilience is actually broken down into some elements because everyone goes, oh, this culture's this, you know, generation's not resilient. But nobody actually talks about what the elements of re resilience are. And one of the elements is actually being able to hope. That is mm. part of resilience. Another part of resilience is being able to be mindful. But what is mindfulness? It's being aware of what you're thinking and your thoughts, being aware of what's in your, your mind, what your mind is full of, mindful, and then not letting that hijack your day. Um, spirituality is a part of resilience, whether that's being able to reflect for you or whatever it means for you personally, it is a part of resilience, um, whether that's being still and being able to calm ourselves and, um, you know, trust that life is good and being able to kind of lock into those places, those mindsets are going to serve you really well. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so any thoughts on um, how you build resilience and bounce back from setbacks in your life, Andrew? Well, I just think that um, we do this quite well. Um, but I think for me, what's important to me is taking time. Um, so probably going away, getting into my journal, if there's something really that I'm stuck on or whatever. Um, but when um, to shift my head into a positive space or whatever, or if it really upsets me, um, that I'll, I'll just I'll need to take my time um, and, but it's with the idea of like, I'm going to take some time away and, and I'm going to come back and I'm my best self or a better self. Actually on that mindset and it, possibility and abundance, I, I watched this, um, with baseball players. My son was playing recently and I saw that the game, and you would have heard this if you read the book about, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's about tennis, but it was about mindset. The game of baseball, as I watch, is just as much with these young kids and anybody in sport about 
the the art and the skill involved in actually the skill of baseball, but then the mindset was equally important because when they got up to bat, which is quite difficult to have contact with the ball and then hit it well mm. um, and not strike. As they hit and they or, or they miss, you you watch the players and suddenly they're like getting so down on themselves, so ashamed and so, and then they've got to you know get up and step up to the plate and do it again. So my poor son, <laughs> not poor son, he's lucky actually. Um, he gets a mum, and I'm like, your mindset matters. You've got to have a mindset of okay, I missed it. Let's go. I can do this. A possibility, abundance. That mindset in a relationship will serve you super, super well. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. So thank you so much for joining us uh, on this journey through principles for building exceptional relationships. We hope these insights inspire you to create more meaningful connections in your life. So stay tuned for more episodes of Healthy Wealthy Wise Artist, where we continue to explore how to build a life of love, purpose, adventure, and boundless creativity. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're on whatever platform, subscribe there, leave a review, particularly the five-star ones. They're much more preferable if you're still listening. And share this episode with someone who might benefit Mm. from these valuable insights. And as always, with you on on the the journey, journey, friends. friends. (laughs) Until next time. Phew, today's masterclass is done. I love reaching back and saying, I've done this and helping you learn the easy way. If you want more, head to larabiancapilcher.com for show notes, links, freebies, my blog, coaching and courses. And you can also head to my socials, larabiancapilcher on Instagram and Facebook. I'm also on Twitter and Pinterest. Thanks again for listening please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. That would mean the world to me. And of course, keep on living the healthy, wealthy, wise artist living towards your dream life. Bye, friends. P.S. Shout out to my hottie hubby, Andrew Pilcher, who does all the editing on this podcast. <laughs>